I'm Michael Bain and welcome to Triggered, coming to you from the secret hidden bunker in the Rocky Mountains in Dragon House Studios, where spring is finally creeping up on the Rockies. And I'd like to start out by saying first congratulations to Midway USA. They have won their third Malcolm Baldridge Quality Award as one of the best run small companies in America. The Baldridge Award is a really big deal. It takes a huge commitment from a company to win. It is Midway's third win. So congratulations, Matt, Jeff, Larry, all you guys at Midway. Great, great job. Today we're going to talk about an old friend. I'm going to show you then a new friend that could save you a lot of trouble. You may remember this gun. This is a Ruger Charger, which is their pistol version of the 1022. And this particular one is in a PMACA chassis, aluminum chassis, one of the very first chassis systems that was available for the 1022 platform. Now there's roughly a million of them, lots of them out there. This was a gun that, that I built on shooting gallery, on camera, on the, the TV, and, and it was a nightmare. There's a lot. Of, it turned out that we re disassembled the original Ruger Charger with a mallet. That should tell you something. But anyway, my idea was always to turn this into a short barrel rifle, which is on the list of things I'll get to one of these days. Right now, it is a pistol. Started out a pistol, is still a pistol. Uh, this is an SB tactical brace on a pistol buffer tube. Uh, the uh, barrel itself, which as you've seen before, is an integrally suppressed barrel. I had to wait a year and a half to get this thing cleared. Originally made by Tactical Solutions, I think there's still a couple of people making these integrally suppressed barrels. They make for small, light guns. Now, when you look at this, you say, well, why? I put as much into this as I put into building 22 competition rifles. You know, what I have here is an exceptionally accurate, extremely quiet, super light little gun. Uh, right now it's just got this Weaver, I think an old Weaver scope on it, uh, which has, I liked it because it has a huge eye relief, so it allows you to cheek it, which is legal, or use it as a pistol with the brace. Um, normally I will go back to one of my red dot sights on it, but it's cute. I actually looked up the science of why people like little things, and apparently there's hundreds of scientists that do nothing but studdle, study why people like little things. And the short answer is, they're cute. Okay, I think it would probably call me at home on that. But in terms of a backpacker rifle, in terms of something you can carry with you, in, in terms of a small game gun, in terms of fun on the range, this is wicked good, and one of the reasons I was thinking about it is this. This is from my friends at uh, k &S Tactical in Arizona. You can also get it from Strike Industries, which comes in colors, by the way. And that will allow me to unscrew the lock nut, unscrew the buffer tube, screw in this plug here, and then attach a 1913 pick rail to it, which is uh, the new cool way to attach a brace or to attach a stock to a small gun. So I had this out to do that, and then an interesting gun came in the mail. Among other things, this gun has a Volkortz and TS-2000 trigger group, which I think is easily the best in the world. I have it in almost all my 22s, except for the very precise Kid Precision 22. But let me show you what came in the mail. That going to save you a lot of trouble. Ha! Voila! This is the ENV from Volkortsen, of course one of our great sponsors. It is a charger pistol fitted with a stabilizing brace and I'm going to take you through this cute little puppy as soon as Triggered returns. Welcome back to Triggered, and let me introduce you to the Volkortsen 
ENV. It is a 1022 type pistol, much like the Ruger Charger. And this is the way it comes. This particular version has a 6 inch barrel. You can also get it with a 9 inch barrel. It utilizes Volkortsen's own aluminum receiver here. As you know, in my Volkortsen Summit, my, my precision competition rifle has a stainless steel receiver in it because I want that weight. But this one, it's very light. Aluminum receiver. It's in also an aluminum chassis. This aluminum chassis is from Odin. And as you can see, it's really excellent. And as you can see, a little bit different from the earlier chassis that I use, this chassis already comes set up with a 1913 rail. So any pistol brace, or if you're building an SBR, any stock that works, connects with a 1913 rail can easily be put on. This particular pistol brace on this gun is one of the newer versions of the SB Tactical brace. It is excellent, a really super brace on it. Uh, you've got the carbon fiber wrapped barrel that is very much a signature of Volkortsen. You're going to get accuracy out of this little gun. Uh, mag pull for the grip, a good hand stop. I think we can all figure out here why we need a hand stop on any sort of any sort of gun with that short a barrel that you might want to cheek, which is legal, or you might accidentally shoulder, which is legal, but you don't want to have your hands slip off on the front. The other thing that I really like about this gun, if you look at the top part of the receiver, the first thing you're going to say is like, wow, it appears to have been attacked by a crazy man with a drill press. But this is very similar to the Mamba that I've been showing you from, from Volkortsen. This particular top of the receiver is drilled for every conceivable red dot sight, which I think is great. So you don't have to go like, well, I wonder what's going to fit. Well, pretty much everything will fit. As you saw in the Mamba, it was really easy to attach the red dot of your choice because it's all drilled for it. The other thing I like about the ENV is it comes with the TC2000 trigger group from Volkortsen, which, as I said, I think is a superb trigger group, uh, one of the best that you can get. So I put a lot of work in getting my gun a lot like what Volkortsen will sell you just straight over the counter. And once again, what's it for? Well, the stock folds on this one. It makes it really easy to carry. The shorter six inch barrel, I wish I had the six inch barrel uh, suppressed because that would be kind of cool. But uh, you, you've got a backpack gun you can take with you hiking. Uh, if you're uh, small games, squirrels, rabbits, this is a perfect little gun for that. And I haven't shot it yet, it just came in the mail. Like everything from Volkortsen, uh, perfectly balanced, perfectly done. You're always going to see this from Volkortsen. and is very, very careful that the little details are all there. I do want to make a point about pistol braces because, um, unfortunately, uh, the times they are changing. If you recall, last year, uh, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives uh, promulgated a new rule on pistol braces that included a chart on how you could decide if you could have a pistol brace or if it was a short barrel rifle or this. The chart was basically done by chimpanzees with typewriters. If you put enough chimpanzees in a room with enough typewriters, they will actually produce a document and that specifically is what the ATF did. They asked for comments, they received something like 300,000 comments, 90-95% were all negative. No one cared. We didn't expect them to. So in August, you're going to see the final ruling from the ATF on what is a pistol brace, what is a short barrel rifle. Once again, chimpanzees in a room. The entire concept, as we know, of the short barrel rifle was a mistake left in the 1934 Firearms Act. It was an accident, but it's an accident that puts a lot of people in jail. So when I talk to you about braced pistols, what I say is valid until August, and then I'm not sure. 
I still plan to take mine and turn it into a short barrel rifle so I can put a stock on it that I can shoulder and see it once again as a small game gun with a folding stock. I think it'll be really, really super. But take a look at this gun. It's small, it's efficient. I can tell you right now these barrels are fiercely, fiercely accurate. <sighs> Call it 1554 MSRP. Quality does not necessarily come cheaply, right? So when we come back, I'm going to show you another new gun that is also from an old friend. This week's trigger is brought to you by Volkortsen Firearms. Excellence is essential. Taurus USA. Prepare and protect. Rock Island Armory Arms Corps, home of the STK 100. Welcome back to Triggered, where our theme today is old friends followed by new guns within that line. If you recall back in 2019, I think 2019, I got a call from Benelli, who asked me if I would be willing to so sort of beta test a new uh, pistol they were going to offer in their Stoger line. Stoger, of course, Turkish-made guns. Um, you're more familiar with the shotguns than anything else. And what they told me was that, hey, they sent one of these guns to Ryan Muller, my good friend Ryan Muller, who is a factory shooter for Stoger. And they said, we'd like for you to just get one, take it out and shoot it, and then come back and tell us what you think about it and what changes you think we could make. So they sent me an STR-9, this gun right here. It's basically a little bit larger, but a G19 size 9mm polymer frame striker fired gun. I said it has an excellent trigger. I put about 300 rounds to it, something like that. Just taking it out, shooting it, shooting against plates. And what I found was on the whole, it's a really nice gun, especially a sub $400 gun. A lot of thoughtful work went into it in terms of the scalloping on, on front and rear. It's a really ergonomically shaped grip. The grip itself has just the right amount of stick to it. Trigger's pretty good. You know, it's really funny with these, these um, striker fired guns, we're always going pretty good because we never want to go like, wow, because um, we rarely get there. 15 plus one. Since then, since the introduction of this gun, Stoger has gone essentially to an entire line of STR9s, of which this is the latest one. Now, that line includes full-size guns. If, if you think of it in terms of Glock, you go from G19, G17, and then you start coming down. They, they created a compact version. They created a compact version, optics ready, and then optics ready spread throughout the entire line. That is a plate on the top that can be removed to allow you to mount a red dot, green dot optic to it. This is the newest in the STR9 line, and it is the subcompact version, which basically puts it in what I would call the great miniature 9mm sweepstakes. It's roughly, what, 22, 22 and a half ounces. It's a little bit on the heavier side, but within the specs on it, the length, the width, uh, the depth of, of the size of the frame, it's right in there with the other miniature 9 millimeters that we've talked about uh, pretty much incessantly <laughs> over the last couple of years. Uh, this particular version is 10 plus 1. Obviously, accepts the larger capacity magazines from its brethren up the line. It's got two regular screws, pop this, pop the plate, and basically I'm going to say like, oh gosh, Holosun 407, 507Ks, the small, the, uh, uh, the Sig Romeo Zero, Romeo Zero Elite, uh, the Shield Compact. But one thing that changed on this, which is a really a change for the better, is the trigger. The original trigger was pretty good for a striker fired pistol. This one is excellent. You can see here clearly it's, it's a flat trigger. And here's your little trigger safety right there. It's a little bit more ergonomically built into it. But it has a really excellent trigger pull, a little take up, fairly crisp let off. And you can kind of see here, resets quick, very crisp, makes for a nice little gun. Um, as somebody told me uh, recently, he sent me a note and said, 
I don't see you can talk about all these little nine millimeters because you know what? They basically all look like little b skinny Glock G26s, which they are, all of them. But again, once again, the stack and a half magazine, 10 rounds. It gives you the pinky. This is something we've been talking about a lot in classes and, and you've seen it on the internet. Is what? How can you make a compact 9mm shoot better? Provide a place for Mr. Pinky because Mr. Pinky is a controlling finger. It's very important to have that. You will shoot better with a pinky around the grip, even if it's a very small pinky grip. But so, once again, you've got Stoger, a name that's been around a long time you can rely on. Turkish made guns, and as I've said before, the Turks have really turned a corner. They understand the American market. They're producing quality products for the American market. Um, for a carry gun, they're right there. They've had a couple of years now to beta the entire STR 9mm line, and they've done a good job with good steady updates to it. So the great thing about these guns, as I mentioned before, Without the optics cut, uh, two, 390, uh, 329 MSRP with the optics cut um, or with uh, uh, night sights, it's going to be 399. Uh, that means realistically you're probably looking about three and a quarter, something like that, maybe even lower. So anyway, new guns keep getting made. You're going to see them right here on Triggered. I'm Michael Bain. Of course, you can find links to everything we've talked about here on michaelbain.tv because Triggered it's on the internet and it's free. So we've got a gun show for you almost every week. You don't have to pay anything and we can actually find what we're talking about here. Once again, congratulations to Midway USA on their Baldridge win. We will see you next week.